Hi, I'm James Sykes, CEO of Baseload Energy Corp. I'm here at PDAC to talk with investors, provide some updates about our drill programs, and I'm also presenting an academic talk at PDAC that, that I've been invited to do. It's about the Athabasca 2.0, and I'm very excited to deliver that talk later on today. But in the meantime, I'm here to talk with Mr. Matt Gordon. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uranium uranium 2.0, it feels like as well, doesn't it? It does, uh, yeah. Still a bit excited. I was at the uranium do last night. A very happy environment to be in. Ministers turning up. All the big companies, Kazatom, Prom, Arano. Everyone's there. It was, it was, it was quite nice to sort of see. Good yeah, day. it's always good. Funny thing is, though, even when uranium prices were down, those guys were always happy. <laughs> <laughs> uranium brunt, uranium bunch, they're a great, they're, yeah, they're absolutely amazing. And a free bar. Um, <laughs> there's that. Um, so you, let's, we've, got to, we've got to talk about something that happened a, a few weeks ago, right? You went and raised out some money and you got absolutely beaten up for it. Do you think it was fair? No, I don't think it's fair. I think it was misinterpreted. Okay. And I think a lot of people thought that we went out and actively looked for the money after being cashed up. But in all honesty, we weren't. Uh, that money came across our desk and we decided that we would be raising at a premium to most of our raises that we had done previously. Mm -hmm. Made sense. And there's a simple additive in, in this place when you're trying to raise money. It's take the money when it's there. It doesn't go yeah. all the time, but no, I hear you. You know, if we tried to raise that money now, we wouldn't be able to. It's, so I'm happy that we took the money and now we're, we are beyond cash up to do what we want to do and continue exploring. So, so how much was it? Can you say who it was? It was it was five million originally, but we upsized to six million in the end, and I can't say who it was. Right. Okay. But we're talking about one large there, for the the bulk of it. Yes. Yeah. Right. There okay. there was one major investor that are long term investors. They, oh, they already they, who already in. They are already in, but they see the strategy. They see the upside potential of uranium. They like baseload. They like what we have at Accu, and they like our upside potential for exploration. Okay, well, let, let's get into what that upside could be. Okay, so you've now got money to do stuff. What are you going to do with it? it? And why I say that's really important is because you've you got you to gotta make discoveries. You've got you to gotta show that mineralization. You've got you to gotta deliver, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so what have you done previously which informs what you're going to do? And why, should, why are you sure of success? Can you be? You can never be sure of a success. But what we do on our end is to limit the amount of wasted dollars, I would say. I mm -hmm. think we do a really good job of defining our targets, mm -hmm. things that look like they should deliver results, and then we go and drill them. Uh, you know, we do what an exploration company has to do. We raise money and we drill. My first boss, he, he said a quote a long time ago, and I'll never forget it, drill or die. We're not out there to raise money and sit on it. We want to drill. We want to drill, and we want to drill some more. That's what we're about. We're all exploration. So what have we done previously? We've done a lot of drilling on Accio. That's been the bulk focus of everything we've done for the past three years. We haven't been very active on the exploration side of things, which is what we are. We're an exploration company. But now that we've got the funds to do it, the uranium market is hot. People are paying attention. Uh, Can Alaska's recent results with a beautiful intersection proves that, that the market is really paying attention to some good results. Mm -hmm. So we're out there to make a discovery as well. So we've increased our budgets, we've increased our meterage to expedite a discovery. Okay, you put out a hole recently. Yep. Three mm -hmm. holes. Right, but one particular you're a little bit more excited about? Or? Yes. Yeah, oh, okay. Sure, yeah. So, so, okay, let's talk about what, what you saw. So I, as an investor, I want you to find uranium. Yep. Did you? No. Okay, so why are you excited? Because we found the system that exists to carry uranium. And that's one of the tricks of, of all exploration for uranium. If you don't have redox style of alteration, you're never going to have uranium precipitate. So it, it's quite important to have those fluids and those conditions exist. Mm -hmm. And discovering that within our first couple holes on one target area, one of over 20 target areas on a project that a lot of people kind of wrote off saying we're too far away. We've just proven that the systems exist. Right. Everything was there. I've a number of pieces of that core actually <laughs> like meters of that core, I could take to other deposits and just and you'd compare the two and they look identical. The only thing missing was uranium. So we found the right fluid systems. So what are you saying? These are the conductors, which, which not, no, not even conductors. Not even conductors, no. right? So w w when you, why are you excited again? Explain it less technically so people can get why we they found be we found fluid movement. We found right. fluid movement that carries uranium. Okay. Without those, you will never have uranium deposit. So now that we've identified that in one, in one target area, 
Now we have to, we're going to finish targeting that area. We're going to finish drilling off that area because we've just done one single fence. So now we're going to step down on strike and continue drilling on there and down dip from where we had anomalous radioactivity. So we've proven fertility in the area, but we know there's anomalous radioactivity in the area. We've proven the alteration is there that carries uranium. Mm -hmm. Now we just have to find if uranium was deposited in this one target area. If not, which is quite possible because uranium is not everywhere. If it was, then it wouldn't be exploration. So we've increased the amount of meters that we're going to drill so that we can target more areas. And then we can go specifically hit certain areas, certain target areas, and fingers crossed for, the, for uranium. We know that our methodology finds the right structures, finds the right alteration. It's just a matter of uranium is there. And unfortunately, there's no way to, there's no way to ever tell before you drill a target if there's going to be uranium there. Mm -hmm. All we can do is just do our best to limit the amount of wasted drill holes, the wasted meters by drilling dead rock or, or structures that have no fluids. Yeah. So I think we do a really good job of that. So t talk to me about the actual drilling. You know, you talk about meters, right? So is it deep? I mean, obviously with Canada, Alaska, we're eight, nine hundred feet. I mean, that's expensive drilling. So for, for you guys, what does it look like? Much cheaper, much shallower. Right. We typically go around 200 meters. With some of these targets, we're extending to about 250, 300. Okay. But having, having this shallow nature, like, that's our thesis anyway, Athabasca 2.0, we're looking for shallow mineralization. We're looking for things that are shallower than 200 meters. You're up on the edges of the basin. Is it when, that's Basically, why you, yeah. Okay. That's the idea, is that where the basin used to be, yeah, we're close to where that used to be. And yeah, so we don't need to look deep. We want to we maintain that shallow focus because we know those type of deposits go into production much quicker. So we can, we can drill more for less. And that's the benefit of what we do. Okay, so in terms of the money that you just got, you had a little bit of money left. How much are you going to allocate? How many new meters? You know, what, what are we going to be hearing and seeing from you? Because it's like, you, I get what you've done to date, but you're going to have to at some point show the market we can actually find the uranium here. So in terms of meters that you're planning now with this capital, is, is, is how much? About two and a half million. Right, two and a half million. Okay, and it's going to get you do what for you? That's uh, going to drill 4,000 meters for us okay. in seven, about seven to eight different target areas. Okay. Hopefully we can get all those target areas done this year. Okay, okay. Well, I think it's as simple as that for you, isn't it? That's, you're now, like, you've got to kind of step up and prove the theory works. Well, that's you're it. about to talk about it this afternoon, yep. but that's theory. Now we need the reality of actually fi finding this sort of stuff. So what's the kind of um, limitations in terms of time frame? When can we expect to start seeing assays come through? Assays, we deliver them every two weeks whenever we do shift changes. Yeah. And well, as we keep drilling, we, we send them off to the lab. Yeah. If, well, if there's no radioactivity, because we do everything with scintillometer anyway, if there's no radioactivity, there's probably no assays to result or to, to produce results. Uh, we do other, other different geochemical studies. But again, we're, we're three holes in, we're 700 meters into a 4,000 meter program. So we've got a lot of drilling to continue doing. Mm -hmm. And as we continue drilling new areas, we'll probably update every, every few weeks or so. Mm -hmm. We might just save everything to, you know, given the way people react to news nowadays, we might just save everything to the end. But, but that's what I mean, I, and I, I, I sort of want to talk about that one because you, you got whacked for daring to raise money to do inspiration. And I think probably, well, you could argue the right sort of people left. I, the, the slightly make, maybe nervous or not, not, not the people without conviction about either the uranium thesis or your ability to find uranium, right? So they, they will have, they have moved on. I don't know who's going to sort of step in and fill, fill that void. What would you say to current investors who've held on or new investors coming into this story? What do they need to believe about you and your, and your theory? We've been successful in the past because we're good at what we do. And we're not changing our, our ideal, ideology or mantra. It makes sense. We've been successful with it. We know that Athabasca 2.0 is a concept that works. Accio is living proof of that. So we just want to find more deposits elsewhere. And we're not going to do that just by wishing it to happen. We need to actively explore. So that's, that's what we'll keep doing. We will keep pushing the boundaries. Exploration is high risk, high reward. Mm. Now, if investors don't realize that, then they shouldn't be investing. But it's to each and everyone's own. As you mentioned, I, I hope that maybe you know, the, the skittish investors are gone and there's room for, for investors who believe in our thesis, believe in our abilities to, to take that chance on us. 
No, I think we've got a great opportunity. I think we've got a great idea. It's unique. It has proven itself. And we will continue to do what we do best. We explore. We limit the amount of funds. You know, I wish, I wish at every target we drilled had uranium. It would just be that easy. But then again, it wouldn't be exploration. It would just be finding. Mm. But it's not that easy, unfortunately. Okay, one, one final one. When you talk about success, how do you define success? Because everyone defines it differently, right? So if I, if I do look at Accio, why would you say that is a good example of what success looks like? And why go trotting off elsewhere to try to find more Accios and instead of like, you know, continuing to maybe expand what, what you've got at Accio now? Oh, we're going to expand at Accio, but we're not doing that until the summer. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's just right now one simple exploration program on a project that has never been explored. Mm -hmm. So again, there's that high risk, high reward scenario, mm -hmm. but we will continue exploring for Accio. Uh, we are looking for other Accios, but we're also looking for Arrows and, and MacArthur rivers, but near surface, because if you find one of those, you've got the world's greatest uranium deposit. There's no doubt about it. An open pitable MacArthur river. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful stuff. So that's what we're looking for. And again, it's just it's not as easy as just putting a drill hole into the ground. You need to you need to refine your targets. You need to have the right targets. You need to have the right conditions. And we're proving that. So success for us, ultimate success is obviously finding uranium. That's what we're after. That's what we want to find. Technical success, which is what we just released, is finding the right structures, the right alteration, the right indications that fluids have moved through the area. Because without fluids, you have no chance for uranium. Without brittle structures, you have no chance for uranium. And we found all of that. We found everything that we needed to find. Like that, that hole, those, that area that we've just drilled is basically 95% successful. The only thing missing is uranium. You can turn that around and say, well, you know, uranium is the big thing, so you need 95% success as uranium, 5% technical success as whatever. But the idea is technical success was there. Very important for everything that we found there. And now that, now that we can kind of use everything that we've just discovered and, and evaluate our geophysics even further, now we can start improving our geophysical targets as well. So it's... Uh, Absolute phenomenal success for us on the technical side of things. Now mm -hmm. we can just we keep honing in, we keep drilling things, and phew. one of these have to have uranium. But you and I, we've had a lot of chats, it's and we could have we could have a, a little bit more of an in-depth chat right now. But I don't think you want to. I don't think I want to because it's you've got the money to do what you want to do. You've got to get out there and do it, and you've got to come back and say, we've made another discovery. I think it's as simple as that, your story right now. That's it. Right? That's all we're about right now. Okay. Yeah. Everything right. else is just fluff. Yeah. Right now, we're in exploration mode. We're in pure exploration mode. We want that discovery. Do your thing. Thank you. Go find it. I kind of think you will. I, I hope do. so. That's, so do I. It, yeah. Like I said. But do it. <laughs> you know, what's, what's success in most industries in, in exploration? I've heard many times, one out of 10,000 10, meters hits or one out of 100 mm. drill holes hits. Mm. It's, it's a lot hard. of meters. It's yeah. hard. It's not. It's not easy. Yeah. I I'd like to believe that maybe our chances are better. Maybe one in 10 target areas are gonna hit. So we have to test target areas. If we don't test them, then we'll never be successful.